The new Resident Evil game, as per usual, is filled with extra stuff. Stuff you may not notice right away. Some of it's earth shaking, some of it's kind of silly. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 20 dumb and mind blowing things you missed in Resident Evil 8 Village. Starting off at number 20, the Duke mentions the merchant and is hiding something, let's just say. Sometimes the Duke, the big guy you know that you buy stuff from, will randomly say, what are you buying? <laughs> just something an old friend of mine used to say. What are you buying is the mysterious merchant's line from Resident Evil 4. Now the Duke and the merchant pretty much serve the exact same function in these games. So it follows that the Duke would reference everyone's favorite merchant from RE4. This is really dumb, but there's also some stuff you can see in the Duke shop if you look at it from out of bounds. And if you really want to, I mean, you can get a look at the Duke's previously impossible to see backside, but it ain't pretty. <laughs> I am but a humble merchant. At number 19, Castle Dimitrisk is actually similar to a real world castle. As per this Reddit thread by Smooth Skin Operator, Castle Dimitrisk was actually inspired by Pella's Castle, which is in Transylvania, Romania. Also, the thread was literally made by a Romanian, so they'd probably know better than anyone. At number 18, there is a very interesting little Easter egg involving wine. The wine in the opening is called Regina Rose which means Red Queen in Romanian. The Red Queen was the evil AI antagonist in the first Resident Evil movie, also showing up in Resident Evil, The Umbrella Chronicles, that light gun shooter on the Wii, so it actually is canon. Another interesting coincidence here is that the main character from Capcom's other survival horror series, Dino Crisis, is named Regina. Is it a double reference? I don't know, but it is kind of interesting. At number 17, Lady Dimitrisk is a relentless stalker, but is capable of delivering the funny as well. That stalking is uh, stopped when confronted with one little thing, a small coffee table. You can get away from her forever if you just run around this little seating area in the main hall of the castle. She'll just never get to you. I mean, there's other funny things you can do with her too. Like when you sneak up on her in the room in the basement, you can throw a grenade in there and she just doesn't react to it at all. It's like GoldenEye 007. <laughs> It's one of those things where the game has scripted animation and you can't do anything to interrupt it, even though it really looks like it should. At number 16 are some interesting book Easter eggs and Mr. Everywhere. In the opening of the game, you can find these two books, one called A Historical Look into the Architecture of Eastern European Castles and Keeps by George Trevor, George Trevor being the guy who built the original Spencer Mansion in Resident Evil 1. On top of that, the stalker monster from the remake, Lisa Trevor, was his daughter. The other book is Gun Survivalist, a heavy firearms manual for field combat situations by Joseph Kendo. Now, Robert Kendo is the gun store owner from Resident Evil 2 and its remake, so probably a relative. Also, Gun Survivalist, like Gun Survivor, the Japanese title of that crappy PS1 light gun game spinoff. Very funny, Capcom. There's also a Mr. Everywhere bobblehead around, which was the collectible item you shot in Resident Evil 7. At number 15, Heisenberg actually calls something out from Resident Evil 5. He calls Chris a boulder-punching asshole, which is a reference to the infamous scene where, well, in Resident Evil 5, Chris punches a boulder in a volcano while fighting his arch nemesis, Wesker. This is said during the absolutely mad boss fight with Heisenberg, so it's easy to miss. How he could possibly know about this is anyone's guess, but it's a funny reference. The boulder-punching asshole! At number 14, there's a bunch of cool hidden areas in the game, like Otto's Mill. It's easy to miss. It's off the beaten path. It's down the road leading to the reservoir. There's a vent behind the minecart leading to Heisenberg's ball that's easy to miss. There's like also a hidden alpha lichen encounter, which happens at the front entrance to the castle if you return there near the end of the game. Probably the coolest though, is this one in the cave where you can find some notes from Chris's squad investigating the town, where you'll get some creepy foreshadowing of the giant thing hidden underground. You can even find a callback to RE7 here, an antique coin, which was used to purchase upgrades in that game. And number 13 is reference to Resident Evil 8's bioweapon in Resident Evil 7. Near the end of Resident Evil 7, when you find the secret lab in the salt mine containing the E necrotoxin, there's a note that references stuff important to this game. It mentions the discovery of the vicariant evolution fungus called Mutamycite. 
which is the true source of all the crazy mold monsters you face in Resident Evil 7 and 8. In Resident Evil 8, you find that Mother Miranda discovered the Mega Mutamycete under the village and provided samples to the Connections, who went on to create Evelyn, the monster behind the whole Baker incident in RE7. And number 12, if you look, you can see a bunch of reused assets. Stuff like bottles of bleach, Dolby Bear, and certain cans are definitely reused assets from Resident Evil 7. This is interesting because the Resident Evil 2 remake and Resident Evil 3 both had a lot of reused props as well. So this is less a reference and more something we just noticed and kind of cool. When you do world building, reused assets can actually be an asset rather than a liability. And it's also kind of hard to ignore once you start seeing it. At number 11, Chris Redfield lights one up. The way he lights his cigarette in the helicopter at the end is actually really similar to the way he did it to the original live action ending to the game. That ending is actually the bad version of his ending where he doesn't escape with Jill at the end. It's a little thing, but it's definitely interesting when you notice it and sort of think about the echoes here. And it's also nice to see that kind of consistency throughout different times. At number 10 is the umbrella connection. All right, so this one I actually really love. The umbrella symbol appears prominently around the village, so you might think there's a big connection to the evil pharmaceutical company that is responsible for so many of the outbreaks in the series. And it turns out to be super different from what you might expect. I went in thinking like, oh, well, Umbrella had or has a presence here in some way. Nope. Its founder, um, Oswell E. Spencer, gets a big mention in a note you can find in Mother Miranda's little lab near the end of the game. This note's actually written by Oswell himself, and he talks about how he met Mother Miranda as a young man and was inspired by the symbol of the Four Lords, which he modified just a tiny bit and used as a symbol for his new company. They also mention a special flower found in Africa, which is both a reference to RE5 and the creation of the T-Virus from RE1. In my opinion, it's probably one of the coolest through lines you could have thought up for this. At number 9, Mother Miranda's lab looks super familiar. In fact, if you've ever seen Alien Covenant, you're gonna notice some similarities. Just look at any screenshot from the movie and compare it. This old lab was very clearly inspired by the one from the most recent Alien movie. At number 8, the Mercenaries Music Mix. Alright, so this is a short and sweet one, but the music used in the Duke's room between rounds in the Mercenaries mode is actually a remix of the save room music from the first Resident Evil game. At number seven, there is treasure that you can't get. Has Benevieto is a place that uh, you're gonna, well, see some stuff. It's filled with hallucinations. It's totally meant to screw with your mind. Like this treasure's probably there just to mess you up and make you think there's some way to get it even though there isn't. Absolutely need to credit this thread started by Darth Joba on Reddit, which made it very clear that the treasure cannot be obtained. Thank you for doing the work. At number six, the main menu actually changes as the story progresses. Now, I know this is a small thing. It's not a big deal. But as it goes from day to evening to night, as the story progresses, so does the main menu. It matches the time of day in the game. It's just a really cool detail that sort of keeps you in the game world, in my opinion. At number five, can you kill the Duke? Is it possible? Uh, actually, no, you can't. Most of the time, if you fire a weapon at him, or even just in his general direction, he'll just clap his hands and laugh a little. He will then resume selling you things. Certain weapons have a little more of an effect, though. Uh, like if you throw a pipe bomb at him, he'll just cough and say, What are you doing? Or, That's a lot of destructive power. That's a spicy meatball. He doesn't say the last one. Number four, let's actually stick with the Duke for another point. Uh, the lore involving the Duke. He is a mysterious guy, all right? So obviously there are gonna be a lot of theories that arise out of this, and no one knows exactly what his deal is. Here's what we do know though. So the Duke previously conducted business with Lady Dimitrisk before the events of the game, and he also knows the merchant from Resident Evil 4. 
That being said, not even he knows exactly what he is. So combine that fact with his strange body and he's probably a mutamite creature of some kind. In the concept art for the game, he was originally one of the four lords, but they eventually made him what he is now. The rug in his cart is written in French and says, the money defends the righteous, which makes sense. Dude loves money. At number three, House Benevito is one of the biggest callbacks you can imagine to one of the many prototype versions of Resident Evil 4. Like, it's well known at this point that 4 went through like a lot of variations before becoming the classic it's considered to be today. 8 actually brings back a big feature from one of those prototypes. The 2003 4 demo showed Leon being attacked by evil dolls in the Gothic Mansion, and we finally got something like this in the actual game with the creepy doll. Who you encounter in House Benevito. And number two, there is a ton of foreshadowing. Ethan's constant hand trauma has been commented on by pretty much everybody, but the interesting thing about it is there's actually a reason for it. His almost miraculous healing abilities didn't just come out of nowhere. He actually died in Resident Evil 7 and has basically been a mold infested zombie for the majority of 7 and 8. The way that Mia acts during the open is a big hint that there's something wrong with her, like she's irritable and doesn't seem to be acting like herself. We found out later that it wasn't actually even her, it was Mother Miranda pretending to be her to steal Rose. When Lady Dimitrisque drinks Ethan's blood, she mentions that it is going stale, which foreshadows the fact that Ethan is actually part mold monster. During the scene with all of the four lords, Lady Dimitrisque also mentions how Heisenberg's loyalty isn't a sure thing, which foreshadows his rebellion later in the game. There's a line where the old woman says, how can someone be almost dead? Another reference to the fact that Ethan is actually a reanimated corpse. Hell, the entire Village of Shadows children's book opening to the game is foreshadowing. Each one of the creatures in the book correspond with one of the four lords in the game. The little girl is Rose and the witch at the end is Mother Miranda. And at number one, some ending spoilers. Uh, the ending of the game makes it really clear Ethan is 100% dead. He literally crumbles into dust. But in the post credit scene, we see his daughter visiting his grave. And during the final shot, it seems like the car she's in gets stopped by somebody. The camera is too far away to tell who it is before cutting to black. It's actually Ethan at the end. You can actually get a better look at him by entering photo mode before the screen starts to fade. How is he still alive? Who knows? Also, as a quick bonus, as mentioned in our 10 Things Resident Evil 8 Doesn't Tell You video, you can melee arrows out of the air if your timing is good enough. And it's really cool when you do it. It feels great. That's all for today, though. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a subscription. So click subscribe, enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.